In this section, we will discuss what is the use of sham link in uh, the MPLS VPN when we use the OSPF protocol on our uh, customized devices. So in this diagram, you can see here, we have a back to back link, or you can say a backdoor link between the uh, CE1 and CE2. So the this is our customer B. So customer B is having one uh, backdoor link for some uh, maybe um, uh, for some disaster kind of situation, maybe he, let's say if he lose uh, the WAN link or the main link, then in that case, uh, they may be uh, communicating with some server which are very crit critical and uh, they are hosted in their uh, another site, right? So in that case, uh, they need this backdoor link, but their main link is a very high speed link. And this backdoor link is for the disaster situation only, and it's a very uh, low speed link. So uh, for the normal traffic or when this link is up, so when the main link is up, so the customer wants to communicate by the high speed link only, which is why the ISP uh, MPLS backbone, not why this backdoor link. So what happens is, let's say if I go to R8, show IP interface brief. So this is the link which is going to the, uh, which is, this is my back to back link. Let's make it up interface F0 by 1, no shutdown. So this is our back-to-back -back link and on the back-to-back -back link also we are running the OSPF area 0. Okay, show IP OSPF interface brief now. Let's check here. Show IP OSPF interface brief. So we are running area 0 on our back-to-back -back link, right? And we have the neighborship is all, you can see the neighborship is also up now. You can see here neighbor is activated on this particular back-to-back -back link, show IP OSPF neighbor. So our neighbor 6.6.6 .6 is up now. If I check show IP route, Okay, let's uh, just give me one moment. Let me clean up the previous configuration. So I have uh, cleaned up the configuration. So it was still running on the NSSA and all. Okay, so uh, what we have seen uh, so far is that we have one back-to-back -back, uh, backdoor link and uh, via this backdoor link, we also having the OSPF neighborship between R8 and R6. So now if I check at R8, and if I do a show IP route, I have set the metric more than 5000. Okay, so now you can see the metric is around 5020 or sorry, not metric, the cost. I have set the cost around 5000 and now it is receiving 6.6.6 .6 via the back to back link, right? Which is a low speed link, right? So if it, if we do a trace from R8, now you can see it is going directly via the back to back link, which is a low speed link, right? We doesn't want that, right? We don't want that. We want that in a normal scenario when there is no disaster. So the traffic should go or the traffic must go via the ISP, ISP uh, MPLS backbone, right? So what is the uh, solution for this now? Because what is happening here is you can see uh, if we check at R8, R8 is receiving this particular route as an intra area route, right? And what PE is sending, uh, PE1 is sending 6.6.6 as, as an inter area or OIA. That is why it is not even checking the cost that the cost is high or not. So the comparison that it, it is doing is on the, based, uh, on the base of, basis of uh, inter area and intra area. So because from the back to back, it is receiving the prefix as an intra area. That is why it is making it as best. So now what is the solution of that? The solution of that is to use a sham link concept into OSPF. How we can achieve that is, we need to do this configuration at PE1 or uh, on the provider as devices. So the first requirement of sham link is that we must have one uh, 
IP address of slash 32 uh, subnet mask only. So if we have one loopback, let's say here loopback triple one, it is a slash 32 IP, right? Now, what we need to do is we need to advertise this particular route or this particular uh, IP into the BGP, VPN, V4, VRF. Okay. So what we will do is first of, and also the, the second requirement, the first required requirement is that this IP address must be of slash 32 bit. The second requirement, we need to put this particular uh, IP address into the same VRF. Okay. Where we want to uh, communicate, right? We are using it into the customer VRF B because F two by zero or this is interface is into the customer B VRF. So now I have put it into customer B VRF. So two requirements are okay now, right? Slash 32 IP and we have configured it uh, under the customer B VRF. Now the third step is we will go to uh, router PGP process our uh, BGPS number is 500 we will uh, or let's do like this let's create one prefix list uh, let's say sham sham link and uh, permit permit this particular IP okay slash 32 and create one route map let's say with the same name sham link and let's call this prefix list here match ip address prefix list sham link now i will go to my bgp process under my bgp process i will go to the address family vrf for customer b and i will say redistribute connected with the route map of sham link because we just want to redistribute this particular ip address to form a sham link so sham link is nothing it's just a demand circuit between the pe devices or you can uh, refer it as a virtual link between the two devices it, it works same as uh, the virtual link that uh, the concept that is there in the ospf okay so route map name is sham link right now the last requirement is i will go to my ospf process router ospf 100 vrf vrf name is customer b and i will say area zero is sham link what is my ip address that i'm using to form this sham link it is 111.1.1.1 let's say we will configure at pe2 it's a 111.1.1.2 enter to <clears throat> show history if i go to pe4 i think at pe4 i already have this configuration so section router ospf let's check it out So at PE2, we already have this uh, configuration. So what is the configuration under the VRF? Uh, first of all, let's verify here also step by step. Our first requirement was the loopback IP must be of uh, slash 32. Loopback is 111. So you can see here the loopback IP is this and it's slash 32. Second one is this particular interface is into the customer B VRF third one is we need to advertise this particular ip into bgp vpn v4 and that particular vrf right so let's find out so at pe4 you can see here into customer vrf b we are already uh, doing the redistribution right it's redistribute uh, connected check if we do have some prefix list here show prefix list sham 
now we don't have let's also create the prefix list here and uh, just advertise what all uh, advertise only uh, this sham link ip so i will create one prefix list here permit and we will permit this ip slash 32 i'll create one route map with the same name and i'll call it here show ip address prefix list and the prefix list name is sham then i will go to my bgp process i will say no redistribute connected because we do not want to redistribute everything and we will say redistribute sorry first of all we need to go to the vrf process and no redistribute connected then we will say redistribute connected a route map the route map name is sham and our last step is we just need to give the command under the ospf process for the sham link area zero sham link our own ip and our destination ip right that's it now you can also verify the sham link if you do a show ip ospf sham link now you can see here this sham link status is up what is the neighbor ip neighbor ip is 111.1.1 right source address is this one and you can see here the hellos are suppressed like uh, it is the same concept of virtual link that is into ospf so it's a it's a demand circuit okay it doesn't need any hello or uh, something so now what is the effect of that let's check it out at r8 now you can see r8 is now receiving 6.6.6 .6 as an intra area route right and now let's check it out it's 18.1.1 now earlier you can see it was going directly right to 6.6.6 .6 when uh, there was no sham link it was going directly via the back to back link but now if you do a trace now now you can see it is now following up the correct path so now it is going via the isp cloud or via our main link which is which is a five speed link right and now it is not following the backdoor link okay so if you do a show ip route here now you can see that it is following the correct path but we need to make sure that the cost is high via the backdoor link because now you you can see here that via backdoor also it is receiving intra area and via uh, the main link also it is receiving as an intra area but based upon the cost because it is receiving cost 32 via the uh, main link and via the back-to-back -back link it is receiving cost more than 5000 that is why it is uh, accepting this because let's try this let's try to increase the cost uh, maybe here or let's try to decrease the cost at the back-to-back -back link so if i go at r8 and if we do like this interface what is the interface ip is fast ethernet zero by one i say ip or spf cost let's say one so ip route now you can see the change as soon as the cost is low why the back to back link why the backdoor link it again started following this path it is again now going to the backdoor link right you can see right so the you, because now <clears throat> now see what is happening is pe1 is also advertising uh, r8 the routes as an intra area and r6 
via backdoor link is also advertising the same prefix via i mean as an intra area so now it is uh, now the it's the tie situation that is why now uh, r8 needs to look into the uh, coast and coast where the back to back link is now low that is why now it is preferring the back to link so when we are uh, doing the sham link configuration so for this feature we need to make sure that via the backdoor link our cost is maximum otherwise this, this feature is not going to work so this was all about uh, sham link and uh, if you like my videos then i would request to like subscribe and uh, share my videos thanks for watching